it's just chaos. It's, it's so, like it's so far out of the realm of what we think normal life is supposed to be. You see people with blood running down their neck all the time. It looks like they got bit by a vampire. And you see them running around with a needle in their hand, point uncovered. In Kensington, that's, you know, that's, that's normal. I see the drug addiction. I see the drug dealing. I see the violence. I see the poverty. But I think most of all, I see pain. You know, that, that's what you see there. You see, I think, humanity at its lowest. intentional drug overdoses in 2021. Curtis Benson is looking for his daughter. She's addicted to opioids and has been missing for three weeks. She had got about nine months clean and just took a turn for the worse. I just need to know that she's still amongst the living. I just don't know what else to do. According to the Philadelphia Police Department, fathers like Curtis are a common occurrence here. We get it once or twice a day. You'll have parents come up, grandparents, aunts, uncles, you know, showing us pictures. Philadelphia had its highest death toll ever from unintentional drug overdoses in 2021. What's going on y'all? I'm Frank, welcome back to the channel. So a lot of the stuff that we've seen there is extremely disturbing. Um, and I was debating whether showing it or not. Some of the footage is from my last trip. Some is just footage that I've accumulated over time. I'm sure some of the stuff 
people have seen on my lives before um, because some of the stuff happened, you guys were watching on lives. Like I said, 100%, it is meant to be eye-opening, it is meant to be shocking. I think that drugs and the situation in Kensington and other places in the United States has become so normalized that all the suffering and all the pain and all the inhumanity, all that stuff, is sort of second nature, unfortunately, right? which those type of places, in my opinion, should never become second nature. Uh, yeah, just that place, you know, one of those feelings. I'd be lying if I said that I didn't notice change in Kensington. 100% since they had the mass shooting on Kensington and Allegheny, things have changed. We are following a developing story out of Kensington, where police say multiple shooters fired into a crowd last night. Nine people were shot and taken to the hospital, and police say four of those victims are in critical condition. Good afternoon, Nydia. For what we know, all nine of those victims are still in the hospital, as you said, four of them critical. Police say those shooters had no regard for any of the lives around them when they pulled up to that busy Kensington intersection on a warm night in November and unloaded their weapons. You should be able to walk through the city streets and not have to worry about gunfire. On the busy corner of Kensington and Allegheny Avenue Saturday night around 1045, police say multiple shooters got out of a black vehicle and fired around 40 shots. Well, we have some brazen individuals in this city um, that don't care. They don't care how many police officers are out here and some of them don't care in terms of how many people are out here. Police say the victims range in age from 23 to 40. Both men and women were shot. Police brought all of them to Temple Hospital. These individuals may have uh, spotted someone that they, they wanted to shoot at exited the vehicle and just began firing at the group of individuals that were there. As police investigate, they are turning to businesses nearby for surveillance video. Still, police say people in this neighborhood should be on alert. The fact that we are, you know, nine people shot, I, I think that's a public safety threat um, in itself that, that people have to be concerned about individual shooting in this city. And Nydia, this is a high crime area of Kensington. Police say earlier in the night on the same block, the narcotic strike force had its own investigation going. A little later on, nine people shot on that same block in Kensington. Once that shooting took place, um, not only local, national news, but international news covered that shooting. And then since then, I think that news agencies and media outlets have been combing the internet and YouTube for Kensington sort of got put on their radar. So they've been combing the internet for Kensington. See like, yo, what is this? Um, and what they see is absolutely shocking. As you know, Fox has been down there with me. Um, and there's been multiple other news and media outlets that have been there. Vice has been there. Um, CNN has been there. ABC has been there which is cool because now we're starting to get the word out, right? We can't change something unless people are becoming aware of it. Um, but now it's time to put stuff in action. So like I said, I have noticed a change since that mass shooting. Previous to that, if there would be a shooting on a block, they'd park a squad car there and leave it there for a couple days and then move it. Um, since that shooting, 100%, they have been parking squad cars up on blocks that are known drug blocks they've been parking in there and leaving them there with their lights on and that's basically a sign to the dealers and the users like yo you can come out if you want to but somebody's going to be held accountable um i can't say i've seen you know a whole bunch more arrests or anything like that um i'd be lying if i said i seen that i just seen a lot more police presence um and with that presence comes a decrease in the dealers that are out and with that comes a decrease in the users that are out. Now we just need to keep it like that, right? We need to keep putting a foot on their neck and showing them that, look, we can't do this. Um, and when I say we, you know, that's, that's up to the city of Philadelphia um, to do that. You know, my job, what I do is just to make the people that I come in contact with feel loved and not forgotten and know that somebody, you know, for the 15 minutes that we interact, that they know that somebody knows what they're going through. Um, I can relate to them. And just to show them like, look, there's a better way. It's possible, I've done it. 
So I, I think I'm going to release um, more of these little short videos and short films um, showing, you know, the, the dark side of Kensington. People know it's there, um, but a lot of times we don't get to see it. And mind you, this video isn't going to be monetized. You know, uh, YouTube will strike that right down once they scan it. Um, but I, I don't really care. This video is meant to raise awareness, not raise funds. You know what I mean? Um, everything I do is to raise awareness. You know, if funds come with it, cool. Um, but that's not the goal. Um, so just think about it. Look at this and realize that this is what's going on. Um, and, there, and the thing about this is there's 100 Kensingtons, right? There's one in every state I'd be willing to bet. Um, you know, and the way that addiction is going right now, none of us are immune to it. We've all encountered family members that have gone through this, if not those of us ourselves firsthand know about addiction. Um, we've dealt with it through family members. So I just wanted to touch on this real quick, y'all. Um, hit that like button, hit that subscribe. If you're not subscribed, I thank y'all. Remember to be kind, loving, and patient, and uh, see you next time. Gotta give, sir.